This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients, personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit Take care of dot com. The promo code is date me. What a treat. You'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time. Bye bye. Why won't you date me? Why won't you date me? It's called, Why Won't You Date Me? I'm just trying to figure out why I'm single, even though I'm fucking fabulous. And I love giving blowjobs and other stuff. My guest today is the very lovely, very funny, dear fucking friend of mine, Mateo It's literally that all the time when we're with each other. (laughs) It's it's not any different. No, it truly isn't. I'm 100% sure my new neighbors hate me. Oh, 100. I spend so much time screaming and splashing. Yes. It's a very good time. Mateo, how are you today? I'm fine. I'm like, I don't know. I'm in LA. I have found zero trade in the past two weeks. Explain trade to to the straight people. Trade means like a hookup, Mm -hmm, and I haven't mm -hmm, found any hookups, mm -hmm. and I've been struggling with this one guy, but then this couple's coming in this weekend that I know, and he lives in, they both live in Texas, and then we're probably going to have a threesome, but I'm not into a threesome. Last time I had a threesome, it was awkward. I wasn't into either one of them, and then they showed up at one of my comedy shows. Yes, girl. No. Yes. So you had a fucking threesome, and then you look out into the audience, and you're like, that's that. Well, I had a threesome with them in Aspen. Okay. It was Gay Ski Week. Yes, I- of course, as you do. You have a threesome at Gay Ski Week. You have to. You have to. On what a, else are you doing? We caused an avalanche, killed thousands, <laughs> but it was worth it. The children died so you could get your dick wet. Oh, well, that's just really wonderful. I've also had a couple of threesomes in my day. Liza, well, did you? Well, I was a serial 54. Yes. And I don't want to say it mm-hmm. was a threesome. Then how many people was it, Liza? Well, minimum 17. Well, Liza, that's an orgy. Well, I don't know, it sounded like a lot of fun to me. And I said, you want what sounded like a Japanese food. Oh, okay. And I, uh, I love uh, sushi. A bukkake? Well, that was it, and I've fallen for it more than once. Liza, you gotta watch out for the bukkakes. I was a wet nurse. Ew. <laughs> 
But this threesome, whatever, uh-huh. it was in Aspen, and then I went, and then, you know, come back to New York, and then all of a sudden they're just like at my comedy show, and I t- put it out in front of the whole audience. I was like, well, this is awkward. I had a threesome with those two, and I don't know why they're here. Did they like clap? Were they like, yeah? They were wildly uncomfortable. Of course. Yeah. But also, why did they come to your show? What is the logic? Because they wanted more. They and I was like, like get out of here. I don't want you here. Wait, did they try to fuck you again? Yeah, they were trying to, and I ran out. That is so awkward. I know. I wasn't I wasn't into either one of them. It's like awkward when you go so like I perform Have you had a threesome? Yes, I've had a threesome. Are you kidding? I get, yeah, what I've but seen like, you I've give head. I've hooked up with why. like so many improvisers that I've like been at UCB and been like there's more people in this room that I've like hooked up with and not. <laughs> this is very awkward. Being gay in comedy, there's like no one to hook up with. Good. There's like five of us. Being a very specific type in comedy, it's hard to hook up with people. Because I feel like, or I don't feel like, this is a true fact. Men in comedy have chuckle fuckers. They have girls who will just fuck them. I know, men who literally perform and dress like a toilet. Yes. The fact that they have any kind of confidence to express themselves, women yes. are like, ah! Like, male comics are piles of trash with flannel on and women are like please put the trash in me but then when i get on stage gays are like we hear this at brunch where's <laughs> kathy griffin <laughs> we hear this at brunch we don't give a shit uh so mateo are you you are not i know this because you stayed but in my house and we're say, very good friends yeah you could say you are not dating anyone right now you are no. single yes and you are looking. Yeah, always looking. So do you, I don't know if we've ever like talked talked about this. Do you want a relationship? I think that I say out loud that I do because mm-hmm. that will make me sound human. But and, and every time I try <laughs> to get into one, I panic and I want out. Okay, why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I'm, I always say I'm looking for a handsome man that hates me. I think that's the ideal relationship. Why do you want someone who hates you? I don't. I'm just a sadomasochist. Okay, I'm just insecure, and I go for the wrong guys. Like, can we been get plenty. into your insecurities? Of course we can. So I do think you're insecure. I don't think you real. I think you know oh, that you've got a body yaddy yaddy. I know I how don't insecure think you I believe am. you have a body yaddy yaddy. No, no, I don't. It's so wild to me because you've worked so hard for this body. Oh, thank you. Guys, if you're listening, Mateo Lane on Instagram, lots of booty pictures. Well, they've seen me on your Instagram, all yes, our butts. If you, yeah, if you don't follow either of us on Instagram, get up on there. <laughs> you got my big body in a bikini. You got Mateo Lane's big old butt. Juicy, juicy little butt. Um, but I feel like you worked so hard for this body. You enjoy having the body. But then, like, for some reason, you don't feel like this body is... Is what it is. Yeah, I just listen. Every it, I here's what it is. I we used to be really Catholic, and then mm-hmm. I, I've now what Catholic Griffin calls a fallen Catholic. Okay. But that guilt had to go somewhere, so uh-huh. the guilt went to the gym. So now, like, if ah. I don't go to the gym, it's like not going to church. I still think I'm going to hell. So I'm pretty body dysmorphic, as most gay men are. Because when I met you, you were a little string bean. Oh, literally, yeah. You were very, very thin and. Long legs and just thin. You didn't have a juicy booty. You didn't have calves. The calves came and I said hello. I I still need to get calves. You but have nice calves. You have a great body. They're fine. But See, I, this is what I'm talking about. You have a great body. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know. I th- but then also I think it's like a thing in the gay community where bodies are worshipped. A certain body type is like what everyone's aspiring to be. And even with the bears, yeah, it's like I know a certain bear right. Body it's type. like oh, he's not fat enough. He's not bear yes. enough. He's not hairy enough. Yes. He's not bearded enough. He's yes. not. And then you get to you know uh, muscle queens, and it's like uh-huh. bigger, more. Uh-huh. And you know, I do. I mean, obviously, men are very visual. That's apparent when mm-hmm. you look at gays together. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just. I at first I was like, I just want to work out and see results and then fit into clothes better. And now that I do, I'm still, I'm like, oh, so it that hasn't helped the insecurity mm-hmm. yet. It is a weird thing that it's like, you got to work on your mind first. All right, well, I'm in therapy and it's, it's just, you know. It's helpful. I seek a lot of approval and I want to be liked. 
Well, I Which think Which causes lots of problems. It does cause a lot of problems, but that's like almost the whole basis of being a comedian. Yeah. You don't get on stage to have people not like you. I know, but some comedians, you know, they get on, they don't give a shit. Yeah, but that's a different thing. Right. You get on stage trying to elicit a response. Correct. And if you are Oh, boo, fuck you, you can't say that. That's a response, and they like you. They haven't walked away. They're still interacting with you, so that's... And I got those responses when I was booed at an HIV event for making fun of Britney Spears. (laughs) What a life! 200 gay men booing me, and I let them have it. Oh yes! Event. Oh yes! What happened? Um, I was doing this show at a place called Manhole, so that was already the first problem. It was, it was in Chicago. It's called Hydrate, but they <laughs> will call it Manhole. Anyways, the bathroom sign says no meth. So the show, <laughs> the show was. But they're like, but I call it Tina. <laughs> oh, they didn't say no Tina. No Tina. So I'm so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> The, so the show is, as most gay shows are, terribly run, <laughs> terribly organized, um, barely a shred of talent. So the only person that was talented was the host named Dixie Cartwright or something. So if sure. I forget her name. She's a really funny drag queen in Chicago. Uh-huh. Anyways, the show was supposed to be um, AIDS, HIV mm-hmm. fundraiser. And for some reason, they were using crochet jockstrap on porn stars. Oh, and they boy. had mothers sewing these Jock straps, but they weren't even affiliated with HIV. Not like they lost anyone to HIV. They're just there they sewing were just jock straps. Mothers who were like, "I am lonely." Right, and then so now, now we got two hundred gay men. Everyone's uh-huh. drunk, and they open the show with sex. They bring out each porn star. Each porn star does like three minutes of their own sex, whatever twerking, stripping. There's a pole. I mean, it is sex, 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 sex. And then after this, like twenty minutes, right? Uh-huh. They they have an intermission. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the goddamn fucking opera. They have an intermission. And literally the host comes back out and goes, all right, ev- everyone's still talking. Everyone's still getting drinks. All right, everyone, now for your comedy, Mateo oh, Lane. no. So now I have to walk up to a room full uh-huh. of drunk, horny men. And I am neither a stripper, and I am neither a drag queen. So they don't give a shit. They're like, so, this, is, this is a basic man. This is what's standing next to me. Why right. is he on the stage? And so I walk up, and I'm like, hey, everyone, how's it going? And I'll talk. Like, the talking over me to the point where it was literally like <laughs> like a New York brunch, <laughs> and I was like a mouse trying to squeak to the other end of the room. Like, <laughs> it just was not being hurt. And so I'm up there literally struggling. And it, to the point where I'm talking to myself, saying, like, I can't believe this is happening to me. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here right now in my hometown with my own people, and this <laughs> is happening to me. I said, is anyone going to pay attention? So I said that, right? Uh-huh. One gay turns around, yells at the stage, well, pay attention if you put on a jock strap. I um, lost it, and I said, oh, I get it. You people, which it's never good to refer to your own no, people as you people. No. But I stand by it. I said, <laughs> you people won't pay attention to your own kind, but you'll dedicate your lives to that weekend at Bernie's in Vegas known as Britney Spears. <laughs> and then 200 heads turn around. Now they're paying attention, and they all start to yell at me. <laughs> and they're like, why the fuck you know? She's more talented than you. We don't even know who you are. <laughs> I was like, I know you don't know who I am, but I don't give a shit. Neither does Britney. She's been doing Ty Bo now for a year. And stop pretending she's good. And Mariah's not good. And Christina's a cunt. And then when I called Christina a cunt, one gay almost stormed the stage. He was like, ah! And like the gays were holding back. And then they start booing, right? And they're all screaming at me. And I was like, oh, I get it. I'm sure you're all mask tops. But I've been watching you mince and prance around here for the past 20 goddamn minutes. Go fuck yes. I was screaming at them. I was supposed to do 15 minutes. I did six. And it was, I mean, the sound of the booze and the yelling and the screaming. And then I, I walk off stage. I go backstage. There are seven porn stars looking at me like I made the wrong choice in life. And we made I, porn, but that was bad. Uh, and then I got one tweet from someone saying, we thought you were really funny. What did you think was funny? You didn't think anything was funny. Honestly, what a dream. I <laughs> wish I was there for that. I, I couldn't, I can't even imagine just... 200 gays being like, Brittany, no! I, it was wild. I was like, oh, this is it. So, you know, 
<laughs> Not necessarily going so, so great. You're doing really well with the gays. I'm killing it with the home. gays. So you're on apps. You're on Grinder primarily. Just, just Grinder. You're not on Tinder. Which is now I am on Tinder, but I barely use Tinder. It's just too much work. Grinder is much quicker. But now Grinder's become like the new Candy Crush. I'm not even on there <laughs> to talk to people. It's just like uh, you got you know. It's like something you do out of boredom. Fair. So do you know anyone who's met a partner off of Grinder? Uh, yeah, I have plenty of people. Huh. I know. When my friend Max met his friend, uh, his a uh, boyfriend Anders, Andres, um, on Grinder, and they're like moving in together and in love, and Ugh. I just don't know how you can fall in love because it's like you know, like I went to my friend Charlotte's wedding, mm-hmm. and her priest, you know, was like giving that story. He's like, she grew up in London, and he studied abroad, and uh-huh. they must have passed each other every day, and just missed each other, and then they both moved to New York, found each other in a library, and fell in love, and that's why we're here today. But it's like this bitch found this bitch on Grinder. Oh, my priest is gonna be like, it was four a.m., and they were both horny as fuck. They exchanged a dick pic, and that's why we're here today. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dating apps are, it's like the new norm, and people aren't even embarrassed to be like, oh, we met on Tinder. I know. And now a like, bar is so ugh. old, ancient. His, if someone told me they met someone on the street, I would when lose my mind. Whenever someone is like, oh, I met them in person, I'm like, how? Right. What do you mean? What did you do? What is the sorcery? Well, you met someone in person and then destroyed their house. <laughs> I did. I so did. So it's not that these opportunities don't happen. You're we just correct. destroy these. I guess if I like went out more, I would meet people. But I think you and I are very similar in the fact that I'm going to guess this about you, and I want you to really think about okay. it. Do you think that you also maybe subconsciously sabotage relationships because you're more focused on your career? Um. No. No, uh, I don't, I know. She's crossing her legs, fingers, and toes. <laughs> I know that I don't go out a lot anymore because I'm like, well, I don't want to be tired for this job. Right. Or I'm exhausted from this job right. and I just want to chill out. That was me all week. It's tough. It's you tough know. to work and have a lot. So like that like antiquated thing that's like, can she have it all? At this point in time, I'm like, no. No, I cannot. I have don't it think all. anyone's meant to have it all. I don't know what having it all means. Well, I think for a woman, it's like marriage, a kid, a career. It's a too social much. Life. It's too much it pressure. Is too much. That was the thing in the seventies that, like, that tur- that was like the wrong ideal of a feminist that a woman has to have it all. She can work and take care of kids and have a family and mm-hmm. do this and do that. And it's like, okay, now that she has it all, she still has to do more work. Like, it's too much. I think not having, that she can't, but I don't no, know. Yeah, but I think having it all for me means I have my work, but then I also have a partner to come home to. And then I keep saying, I'm like, I don't want a comic. I don't want someone in the industry. But then it's like, oh, but it makes it easier. Yeah, and it's like, I don't want someone to like... What do you want with a bagel boy like Cher? <laughs> you know, he's really normal. He's so different than Sonny. Oh, God damn it, Sonny. You left me with Chaz. I <laughs> I'll take a bagel boy. No. I See, I, I actually think that I my therapist, I was we were talking about this, mm-hmm. and he was like, How do you see your future? And I was mentioning things that like, oh, I'll be in Italy and I'll be painting, I'll be this or that. And he's like, Why do you never imagine yourself with somebody? And I don't. I don't see myself with somebody. Same. It's weird. Cause as much as I want to be in a relationship and I want like a boyfriend or whatever, I ten years from now. I cannot imagine, like, a man in my space. Right. Like, a man who sleeps in my bed every fucking night. Yeah. Every, he don't go nowhere. And then, like, just always having him. But then I guess, like, if he was there and we were hanging out, then I could see a future. But, like, I'm coming up on a year of no sex. Really? It's been that long? It's been a year. And it's because I... Was like on and off with this dude for like three years. Oh, I yes. I knew I would get sex like semi on the reg and then like hook up with Here's other how people. regular it was because he lived across the street from Nicole. He lived across. One time I was outside of Nicole's house <laughs> and I was like, oh, hey, Nicole. She walked out. She was smoking a cigarette and it like quickly put on a wig and a face. <laughs> 
and she doesn't even finish the cigarette. And it was she was like, "I'll be right back." And it was almost as if you just disappeared into the night. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay." And then I went inside, and I, I maybe it was like forty minutes of watching TV. Mm-hmm. And you walk back in. You're like, all right, how's your night? I was like, wait, you're done already? You're like, yeah, I'm done. Face wasn't ruined. Wig wasn't ruined. Well, I had got it in. You get it in. And then you fucking leave. Uh, it was like a nice, it was like a service. It was like going to Jiffy Lube. But why are you and I so similar in a lot of ways? I don't I don't know why we're similar. Don't I know we're think... friends because we're similar. Yeah. But in the sense of like dating, don't you think that we're very yes. like? Yeah, I do think we like keep people in reserves. And you're like, you'll be good for like when you're good to me, right? And then it's like, well, I don't know, I don't know how I could possibly have a relationship. Yeah. I so then I was like hooking up with a lot of dudes off of Tinder, and then had like a semi regular hookup for like a like uh, I guess it was like four or five times or whatever, and then he was like this hot Australian man. Oh, the- I. The first time I sucked his dick, I was like, oh, your dick's dirty. Because <laughs> I think he was, like, out all day. And then, like, Yeah, I was house. wrestling crocodiles with Bindi Irwin. <laughs> and then he I brought that Bindi crocodile Irwin. dick to me. And I remember putting it in my mouth and being like, this dick tastes like poison. <laughs> it's Sometimes dirty. it's nice to suck a sweaty dick. Oh, it was so gross. That's gonna, that'll I be had, on like, my tombstone. I suck the sweat off his dick until I was like, this is just skin now. I just mistakenly spoke that into the universe because that will haunt me for the what rest of my life. Say? That it's sometimes, oh, sometimes it's nice, it's nice to, to suck, suck a, a sweaty dick. dick. Yeah, the Lord's going to deliver you so many sweaty dicks and you're going to be like, I'm done with the salt. You know, it is like, kind of salty. It is salty. It's like having like a margarita with the salt yeah, rimmed like around it. Like a fucking hot dog dipped in salt, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Oh man! His Can I just was, say I don't like Bindi Irwin, and I hate kid actors. I don't know why you're going after Bindi so hard. I hate her, and I hate kid actors. That young Sheldon or whatever. <laughs> I've never rage. What did young fills Sheldon my, do to you? He's on posters everywhere, acting like a pompous piece of shit. Have you watched the show? I'll never watch the show. Please do Chuck Lorre a favor the, and watch his show. Oh, please. He needs your little eyes to watch his show. Listen, I was a child actor. Liza, please watch watch Young Sheldon. The first movie I was in was in Meet Me in St. Louis. Was she in Meet Me in St. Louis? No, but that's where her parents met. Yes, she wasn't in Meet Me in St. Louis. No, but I was. What was her first movie? She was a baby in a movie called Down the some movie with her mother, and she played. She was like one years old. Cabaret was the pinnacle of Liza's career. But I've had the same shit haircut since. But then, like, she never came back from it. She did. What else? Well, she did Arthur, and then she had New York, New York. Oh and my. that so it was really up until like the late 80s where she like really collapsed. And then like the early 90s, she's like, I'm back. And she did a movie called Stepping Out and it was terrible. And then um, <sighs> she got brain encephalitis. What? And was like in the hospital. She has brain snuffleupagus? Well, it's a, a character on The Wizard of Oz. What's brain snuffleupagus? It's like a, just, I don't know, like a, almost like a stroke maybe. Poor, oh, is that why she speaks that way? Well, she always had kind of a yeah. She's show. always yeah. She's always never really opened her mouth. But now she sounds like beef jerky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry to keep derailing. Okay, We're supposed to be so yes, well, we've talked about nothing. Um, I know. I felt like was I supposed to come in with stories or no? It's fine. Uh, I had a structure, but then I was like, I feel like this structure is too rigid. I want to be loose. I don't well, people talk like about- conversation, anyways. They do. No one I wants think. to feel like they're like a, a podcast is programmed for them. Otherwise, they could watch TV. Hey, that's good. So, <laughs> what is the longest relationship you've had? A year and a half. How long ago? When I was twenty-two. Oh. I'm 31. I know how old you are. I didn't know if you wanted the world to know. Oh, they can. I don't give a shit. I guess it doesn't matter for men. No. For women, yeah. I'm 12. I'm, I'm young Sheldon. I'm 13. Yeah, it was uh, a, a no. probably a bad it was a bad relationship. But now he's Why? married to a man in his early hundreds, so oh, really? we barely had sex, so I can't imagine how bad their Where sex is. Where did you is. meet him? Met him at a bar called Cocktail at the time, which is now Progress. In Chicago or in, in New York? In Chicago, we kept staring at each other and um yeah, it was like right after I was living in Italy and I came back and it was fall and I saw we saw each other and I didn't know if he was with his friend, but I didn't know if they were together. And so mm-hmm. I had my friend ask them and they weren't. And then I went up and we started talking and then 
making out and he was working uh like in uh, politics at the time so he would travel a lot oh. and so he was like traveling the next week and so then he's I'm... a gay politician yes and Is then he still a politician no he wasn't a politician he worked in politics Isn't like that what a politician is no like he's not like a congressman or a senator I guess if or you anything in airplanes you're not a pilot i think he was like one of like the what are those altar boys for senators called uh assistants a congress boy or something i don't know a fuck. congress boy something i have no idea but he was one of those for like a, a rep- i think a republic yeah maybe like he was a staffer like a staffer or something yeah. but um yeah we dated for like a year and a half it was pretty wild yeah were you like I, you didn't live together right no but i was there a lot i was at his his apartment a lot ironically not ironically strangely his best friends are now my best friends and oh, really? he lives like in another state that's so interesting in relationships when you like absorb the other person's friends yeah well i was more fun he was a wet blanket <laughs> you I mean, are fun yeah a wet blanket is such an awful term for a person because have you ever had a wet blanket on you it's awful and that's what he was Ugh. i, I mean we had so he had some redeeming qualities did i he think have a good dick it was fine yeah it was good his, there was nothing who bottomed physical. who topped we flip flopped oh some real verses real verses yeah mm. I think I started bottoming and then we eventually went both mm. but it just was a like tempestuous relationship and I was insecure and I allowed him to insert his needs and wants in me um, and physically and emotionally mm. um, but yeah I mean I'm not I'm the one thing that my my problem with men is I'm very weak with men I'm okay. very submissive and I'm very insecure and I want them to like me. I'm not like witty, funny, smart. I'm not like even this conversation we're having now. I'm not this with men. I'm mm-hmm. I'm constantly walking in eggshells and on treacherous territory because I want to make sure because I want to make sure that they like me. Fair. I Which I'm not saying is good. I'm saying that's just where it stems from. Like even this Dominican guy I've been talking to forever. We were talking yesterday and he like was trying to joke with me, but he doesn't know how to joke. So he was looking at my Instagram stories and instead of mm-hmm. saying like I was making fun of a lot of TV and instead <laughs> of saying like he said to me, You watch too much TV. And I, and then I was like, Well that was mean. He's like, Oh, everything I say is mean. He's like, you know, Bob, you don't know how to joke and this and that. And I was like, I kind of know how to joke. Joking uh, is my literal job. Right. Which I wanted to say. Have you seen Joking Off? Oh, seasons one, two, and three. MTV. With D. Ray Davis. <laughs> um, D. Ray but- Davis always has no less than two beautiful Instagram models with him. I just, I'm, I want to be about that life. I want like some, you know, huge, deep dicking dudes walking on either side of me. I think I want I the opposite of D Ray's life. <laughs> You don't want any Instagram hoes with you? No, I'm I should have called them Instagram hoes. I think they might be in like loving, uh, loving committed thruple. Okay, sure. <laughs> we get it. covering your tracks, Nicole. <laughs> D Ray, if you're listening, uh, I respect your. And I'm sure he is. <laughs> I'm definitely his demographic. Have you uh, met D Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Those beautiful eyes. He's. Oof. I know he does have green eyes. Oof. A black man with green eyes cannot be trusted. Or Just look too good. Yeah. Lisa Traeger has a joke. She's like, if you see a unicorn, you gotta fuck it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I would fuck him. D Ray, if you're listening. I bet you it's uh, he's got a good one. Oh, I'm sure his dick is huge. I like, mean, if he's got that many women walking around, it's either the always. biggest thing you've ever seen or it's uh, not existent. Or he, like, just eats you out for days. I can't see D Ray eating anybody out for days. I, I think he gives you, like, a good deep dick in until you're dead. I don't know. And I'm so tired right now. I can't even think about, about sex. Ray Davis. Um, you can't even think about sex. I wake up so horny. I well, I was horny the other day. Hotels make me very horny. But now yeah. I've been in this hotel for, oh my God, I left $20 tip today. Because I forgot tip for the past three days. So I, for the hotel lady. And I don't know what was I was thinking, but I started to panic when I left. No, honey, I had no change. It's a different person every day. I know. So I, pa- I panicked. I panicked. I left $20. That's, you did too much. Well, I better come back and there better be a goddamn porcelain horse or something in there for me. I mean, that, be, she you better. You know that woman opened that door and was like, oh, I love today. Do you remember when we shared that? Yes, hotel I room? thought about that this morning. <laughs> and I tipped him. What did I tip him? Like $60? $60. $60. We got three whiskeys, French fries, 
And I think like ice cream. Ice or cream. Something? That's actually exactly what we got. And I think it was only like forty five. It was like forty five or fifty dollars. Stupid. It, no, it was like less. Yeah, because we were in like we a Houston, Houston University. Yeah. And so this guy named Enrico, what was his name? I don't know, something like he that. He came He's... in and like you just threw like sixty dollars at him. He's like, He's like, I cannot take this. Take I it. You're like, take. You were literally drinking. You're like, take. It. <laughs> My favorite thing to do is tip people too much and then argue with them about them taking it. I was at Magpies with you and this girl made my ice cream and then I she gave me my change and it was like $5 and I was like, keep it. And then she started to put it in the little jar and I was like, this is for you. you were a Don't m- you share this with anybody. Nicole was a mad woman. <laughs> From the from saying magpies to getting in the car to getting there to ordering it to paint tip to eating it to going back. Yeah, ice cream makes me wild. I fucking love ice cream. But you were trying to prove to that it's the best ice cream, and I was like, it "Oh, I believe you." Was... And you're like, "No, <laughs> I'll show you it's the best ice cream." Well, I needed you to agree with me that it's the. I know my ice cream. Okay, now back to fucking dating. Oh, so I've you... been single ever since. And I've I've been single for years. I've been single for so fucking long. So do you like it when a dude messages you first, or do you like to message first? Um, I definitely like guys to be more assertive. Mm -hmm. But then I don't know. I'm just I really am. I'm I'm really when you start to peel away those layers, I'm a mess. Yeah, I'm starting to figure out. I've like touched upon it in other ones, but I I have a problem with intimacy. I do it too. It's like. Bad. I emotional intimacy. Um, physical too. I don't like to like snuggle or yeah. cuddle or yeah. spoon people. Yeah. Because that feels way more intimate than sex. It's like I'm allowing you to touch me with no end goal. Like you're just gonna have your little fingies on. Do you me? think that that's something that you and I also share in common? That everything in life has to have like an end goal. Like I'm a bit of an extremist. I don't. I've never yes. been known to like hook up and just like make out for a little bit. For some reason, I have to go to like I'm fucking pregnant. Well, that's like John. John gets so mad at me when I'm like, did you fuck? Did you rim? What'd you do? And he's like, Nicole, nobody wants to hear all the business. Also, it's none of your, like, I do what I do and I don't have to have, you know, penetrative uh, penetration or whatever right. to like enjoy myself. And I'm like, but that's the end. <laughs> that's I'm, what you do. I'm literally like, when the bedroom door shuts, I don't know what it is, but it gets dark and you see like two red eyes in the dark. Yes. It's like chupacabra, yes. like, <laughs> Put it yeah. in my hole. I gotta fuck a shit on it. But we're extreme yes. people. I got called an extremist in fourth grade. I wrote <laughs> Ms. Gizzy. I won't forget it. She bitch. was like, she was a bitch. She also accused me of cheating on my math test. And Did you? No. I just oh. have a, so I got diagnosed with ADHD this year. And uh, like I can't read, if I don't take my medicine, I literally can't read a restaurant menu. It's just too much. It's, it's overwhelming and I hate it. So in fourth grade, numbers were a lot for me. Like it just overwhelmed me and numbers would like swirl around the page and I couldn't concentrate on it. So what I would do is I would like look at the two numbers if it was like multiplication or addition, look at the numbers and use common sense to guesstimate what the answer would be and then work backwards. So like sometimes it would take me like one try. Sometimes it would take me two, three, four tries. Isn't it crazy how kids start to w- yeah. work their own ways to figure things out? But then out it's also when crazier when an adult goes, the way you think is wrong. Right. The way you problem solve is wrong. What right. you're doing here is wrong. Right. Even though I was getting the correct answer, this woman told me I was wrong. Right. And Miss Gizzy. Miss Gizzy. I fucking hate her. And she's still a Miz. No, she's not. She got married. She's Mrs. Rosado, but I hope she got divorced. Oh, she married an Italian. Yeah, and we had to all go to her wedding and shit. And Ew. I thought we were happy Why? about it. Why? I don't fucking know. Because she was like, you know what would be good at my wedding? Fourth graders. 20 of them. Bring them on. Also, I'm using her real name. What a needy woman. Best. Whatever. She had curly hair and she looked like Fran Dresser from The Nanny. And Is I she was Italian? Like, yeah, she was Italian. I thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world <laughs> until she was like, because when I was little, I loved beautiful women. Loved. And I was like a suave little girl. I'd be like, oh, baby, you look good. And <laughs> she, I was so excited that she was my teacher because I was like, I get to look at her all day long. I've been like a little horny child my whole life. Yep. And uh, so she like, You came out of your mother and looked at her and said, was that good for you? Was that good for you? Because I slid right out of your loose puss. <laughs> God rest your soul, mom. (laughs) 
making pussy jokes about my dead mom. So then, uh, like, she accused me of cheating. She had, like, a conference with my mom. And then they had another conference because they were like, Nicole writes too big. And I was like, what? What? You are now just nitpicking me. And then I was like, you want me to write smaller? I'll write smaller. So I wrote so small that she couldn't see it. And then she was like, Nicole, you know what? You are an extremist. And I was like, bitch, suck my clit. I hate you. You are, like, nothing I do pleases you. But I will say the one thing she did teach me how to do is balance a checkbook. What? I know. In fourth grade, we would get money, like fake money. She called it friendly fuzzy money. It was these like weird little creatures that she drew. And you would get like money for like turning in something on time or like cleaning up your desk or like putting the mats away for sharing time. And once you had enough money in your friendly fuzzy account, you could like buy a pencil or like buy something. But then you had to show her the work of you balancing your checkbook. It's the only thing she taught me that People was don't great. have to balance checkbooks anymore, right? Because we have, like, digital everything. You should still have, like, a budget and, like, understand how much money is leaving your account each month. Oh, I don't. Well, you don't have to. Poor people do. I definitely do. People I'm doing who... joking off. I'm not this, that. You're you... not poor. We'll see. <laughs> you're not poor because you're, you're, your overhead is nothing. You don't have a family. Right. Here's how people get poor. You can make $20,000 a year and live pretty well. Well, thank you. You could live pretty well. Like, I made, like, twenty grand a year in, when I was living in New York, and I lived great. My rent was $500 a month. Mine's... Well, no, your rent's more than that. Where were you living for $500 a month? Bitch, I was living on 125th and Broadway. And you better believe that my floor was slanted. And you better believe that people got... So my floor was, like, caving in on itself. But then, like, the molding in the ceiling was straight. So sometimes people would get, like, sick in my house. Because they'd be like, I feel slanted, but everything's straight. I My first apartment was a six-floor walk-up. Mm-hmm. With a bathtub in the kitchen yes, that I had clean. to use, I had to wash yes. my ass and forks in the same place, and I, I really lived like a Polish immigrant from 1940, <laughs> and that was what it was. I loved it. I thought it was, and a that great was apartment. in the Lower East Side, right? That was before you moved to Greenwich my... Village. Was on Bleecker and Sullivan. That's such a good location. Yep. Yeah. How much was that apartment? I was rent control. Ugh. But it was so that location, which was almost a one and a half bedroom, uh-huh. even though it was kind of falling apart, was uh, sixteen hundred a month. That is great. Yeah. Okay, we got to take a break right now, and we'll be all right back with more juicy, juicy, juicy shit. Okay, so I want you to look at my Tinder profile and okay. tell me, I have everybody look at it, and okay. mostly I have like the same responses from my comedy friends, uh, that they're like, it's good. <laughs> Your comedians are a really bad judge of everything sometimes. I mean, comedians are awful. No, we're awful, but we're also the best. Okay. It says I'm 28. I know I'm not 28. I just can't, like, change it on Facebook. I don't know how. Also, if you're listening at home and you want to see a visual of what my profile on Tinder and Bumble looks like, you can go to Facebook.com and you can go to my fan page, Nicole Byer Comedy, and you can click on the album that says Tinder slash Bumble, and you can see them there. So I'll go through this. The first picture is of Nicole. Uh-huh. Really pretty. Your face looks great. Thank you. Your wig looks beautiful. You have a Thank fun you. shirt. Yes. You're holding a giant, not even black. It is a <laughs> purple dildo. <laughs> it's like a star dildo. Like it's like deep space color with like stars on it. So you have a Star Wars themed dildo. There's no stars on it. It looks like one of those nail art where like they make it look like stars. Oh, like glitter. Yeah. And it is giant and i don't it okay i got a fat ass so if you into it hand emoji waving waving and then the girl being like i don't know i like people with a sense of humor because life's too fucking long not to laugh hmm uh what i normally people say too short but i guess things do feel long when we, life is long are it, you it, kidding me yeah there are 20 20- 24 hours in one day. Right. That is so many hours. Down to, or DTF, down to figure skate or fuck or farm or fly a kite, whichever is easier. Have you ever read before? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, the thing is, like, down to fuck the, or farm or I guess the way I I'm write like is Temple, insane. I'm like Temple Grandin. I like paper that's such a humor. I also I don't write. I write the way I speak. Well, no, it's also you're writing things that are slightly off what people are normally <laughs> saying. So you're not saying it's like. Also, like I'm DTF, right? Down to figure skate or fuck. I've never read that in my life. So my brain is trying to get a sense of what I'm seeing. And you didn't stop at figure skate or fuck. You put fuck, then after fuck was farm uh-huh. or fly a kite, mm-hmm. whichever's easiest. <laughs> so this is a- a- automatically, we have the most. Yes. The picture, the words, the everything. You're inviting a strange person. Okay. I know I know you may be trying to warn them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. But also in doing so, you are bringing in like a, a group of people that might not be good for you. Okay, the second picture is great. It shows you have a great butt. Thank you. It's your profile. It's you at a Christmas tree. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> you have silver shoes on so uh-huh. you match the tree. Uh-huh. Silver little rocket man shoes. They're my Elton John shoes. The third one is you in a trailer. Uh huh. And you look very beautiful. You've got your curly wig. This is the most normal photo. (laughs) This is the photo. uh, Now you're in a cat suit trying to climb an empty shelf. Sure, yeah. In a green room. Uh huh. Where were you? Uh, Shooting this show called Are You the One The Aftermatch? Actually, I mean, it shows your body. You (laughs) look. You have a nice butt, and you have a little jazz leg coming through. A little like a jazz re- leg? Like a that, like a jazz leg. Like, what does that mean? And you know, like, and all that jazz. Oh, sure. Like a lot of, all right, and then this one, this is actually the best photo. It's you, and what looks like a, it's a chair, but it's a heart, but it's mm-hmm. red, and it's almost, it looks like something in Moulin Rouge. Yes. And you're almost, like, fucking it. Yeah, yeah, I want you to know that I'm sexually aggressive. And the last one's you and Clyde, and you have great makeup. Your eyebrows look great. Thank you. Clyde's so, my dog. What What do you want to know, and I can answer your questions? I want to know, do you think these are good pictures? Do you think they're bad pictures? What would you change? I would have less photos. I would really? take out one photo. Yeah, because the trick is you don't want to have too many photos. Oh, okay. You don't want to have weight. You want to have just enough to show... And then keep them inquisitive. So okay. I think that this is too many photos. I think that you and I approach things the same way. My picture is me shirtless next to Bob the Drag Queen. Uh-huh. That's my first picture. I'm like, yes. this is my life. I want you to know what you're getting into. Uh-huh. Um, but if if you're looking for someone that you want to date date. Yes. I don't know if a giant <laughs> black dildo is the way to go. Okay, here's the thing. I think it's a very funny picture. It's a monster cock. And a monster shirt. So it's like, I, there's two monster things in the picture. I would have never made that connection. <laughs> I would, in a million, if I was on an island and you said, what's the connection? Never would I have connected the shirt to the dick. It's, look at it. It's a monster shirt that's like, rah, 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 look at that dick. Fair, fair, fair that you wouldn't make that connection. Now your face looks beautiful. Thank you. You have really, be- really great skin, great hair. I like, it, it's just this dick. This will invite, this will keep you single. That's not going to bring okay. in the husband. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't mean to, you know, play, you know, you or put, edit it, put something over it, like a question mark. Because the picture of you is great. But I just feel like, come. Okay. Do you disagree with what I'm saying? No, but I think it's like one of those things that I'm like, oh, it's so funny. I don't, you know, like the phrase kill your darlings. Then I think you have to it's say like, it's a joke, but it doesn't work for now. You got to kill it for now. Maybe use it later. So maybe it's like lose it now. Or maybe I put it as like the fourth picture or something. I think that here's what you can do. Just okay. if you want to keep this picture, yeah. you have to change what you're saying in your profile. You have to open with. Hey boys, I'm a comedian. If you're into oh, that, I let can't. me know. But I can't tell someone that I'm a comedian. Here's the thing: I never tell people I do comedy um, in public. I don't either. I don't I like. I illustrator. just i I don't. So I'll tell them I do comedy later. Mm-hmm. Like I wait till like date two or three, mm-hmm. unless they already know. So like, I went on a couple dates with this guy. Who, on the first date, he was like, oh, I know who you are. It'd be weird if I didn't say so. Mm-hmm. And then I went on another date with a dude who waited almost like a full two hours into the date to be like, 
I've seen you live. And I was like, oh, that felt like you were hiding something. Yeah. And then I had this guy who I, the moment I saw him, I was like, oh, I hate him. I think he's gross and disgusting. So I like right off the bat was like, just came from the improv, came from a stand up show. I do stand up. And he was like, oh, so like, what do you do for like money? And I was like, this stand up. I do stand up. I'm a stand up. I make money doing comedy. And he was like, oh, like, I'll tell people like right off the bat if I don't give a shit about you. But if I care about you, I don't, for whatever reason, I feel like it's like maybe braggy or intimidating that I get to make money doing art. Well, because it shows that you're, you're, what does Joan Rivers say? She's like, no man ever put his hand up your skirt looking for a library card. <laughs> you know, you're smart. Uh-huh. I actually, I don't know why I said because I don't tell people I'm a comedian either. It takes a minute. And then one time I told this guy, I'm like, I'm a comedian. He goes, no, you're not. And I was like, okay, I guess I have to prove myself See, and now. that's like another thing. And then also when you tell people you're a comedian, they're like, tell, tell me, me a joke. joke. And then I say, I'm like, I'm sorry, you're not paying me. No, that's and a good one. I should say that. Things. I should say that. And then sometimes people are like, but I'll, I, I could. And I'm like, oh, you don't get it. This is, you don't go talk to a lawyer and be like, huh, show me a deposition. You wouldn't do that. Um, I, when I, after I did Colbert, a girl that I used to teach art mm-hmm. camp with who's very sweet, but like, whatever. Anyway, we haven't talked in a while. She messaged me on Facebook and she goes, hey, I wanted to say congrats on Colbert. And that was really exciting. I said, thanks so much. And she goes, so is this like a hobby? What's your real job? God. I was like, I, I don't know what other thing I have to do to prove right? that it's a real job. I mean, my grandmother literally last year was like, because I haven't spoken to her this year. She was Good. like, are you going to ever go back to college? And I was like, what, bitch? No, I just, no. Why? What no. to do what? I think she like wants me to get a degree and like become a lawyer or something. I think they still hold That's out that delusional. I'm going to do like a straight laced job. And I was like, no, I'm pretty like I'm in it. I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, I really love what I'm doing. And it just, like, it's kind of, like, at that point, hurtful. Yeah, to it be is like, very why hurtful. can't you just take what I'm saying and, like, understand that, like, my life is different than, like, what you thought my life was going to be. But also, like, just acknowledge that I am doing well. I am doing okay. I mean, there's tons of room for growth. But, like, right now, I'm I'm okay. You're doing more than okay. And my grandparents, they're just like, brr. Go to co- I guess when I'm in like a Tyler Perry movie, they'll be like, that's success. Isn't that strange, though, that when you it takes that one thing to sort of get them to mm-hmm. realize that it's a real thing? Like, I, you know, I, I love my brother, but we're not the closest. He's also gay. Mm-hmm. And I think he thought like me doing comedy. I don't even know what he thought. I just I just know that it wasn't like anything he took serious until mm-hmm. his friends started showing him clips of me on TV. And then all of a sudden it became like, a reality for it's him. It's really crazy. Like, uh, my aunt and my uncle came and saw a show that I was doing, and my uncle Andrew was like, wow, you're really funny. And I was like, what the fuck do you think I've been doing all these years if not trying to be funny? Like, why do you think people pay me to do things? It was just like, what the fuck? Like, and he was like, well, I know you're funny, like, just as a person. And like, when I talk to you, but like, I had no idea you could do that on stage. And I was like, ah. I think most people don't have the same urges we do. A lot of people live in fear and want security mm-hmm. and do not want to leave that secure. That's why people stay at jobs for 50 years or however long, mm-hmm. a nine to five, work in an office and work the slowly up because, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's this fear of, of stepping outside of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend uh, Pat in Chicago, he was quitting his job and um, he hated his boss. He hated his job. You know, he's 45 years old. He's got some money saved up. And uh, every single person he was talking to was like, don't quit. Just don't quit your job. Just don't quit your job. Just don't quit your job. Called me up and I said, quit it. Do yeah, something else. Do, do something it. more fun. Take this is lead. your one. Yes. And he said, you're the only person to say that to me. And do that's it. that. And we, you and I were in New Orleans together. Mm-hmm. And he said something to me that will stick with me forever. Because, you know, you're really brave. It, you're doing something that people mm-hmm. don't do. People don't say, I'm going to take control of my life and do exactly what I want to yeah. do and risk everything. And, and it is a risk, you know? It's such a huge risk. You like, I quit my pretty steady retail job. To Claire's, she was a manager. I of was Claire's. a manager of Claire's, and I'd be like, "Get your ears pierced!" No, I <laughs> was working at Lane Bryant with fat women, <laughs> and uh, I quit, and I felt crazy. I was like, "I can't believe 
I'm quitting this job. You make it work. That pays me so poorly that I had so... I got paid eight dollars a fucking hour and mm-hmm. worked there for two years. Mm-hmm. Retail is terrible and disgusting. Mm-hmm. And, and Lane I Bryant only was worked retail. The worst. Yeah, like retail sucks. And then I was like, what if I like waitress? And every so I, I went in to interview at Jane, which is a restaurant on, fuck, it's downtown somewhere, like maybe in the village. And also, like, I'm too fat to work in a restaurant. No one was going to hire me as a waitress. Why? Because people don't want to order dessert when your waitress is like, do you want it? <laughs> I eat it every day. And it's like, you know what? I'll skip it. I'll bring out the dessert tray. I'll skip it and I'll walk home. You know? So, like, fat people serving food I don't think is uh, uh, in people's brains. I don't think they think it's appealing well, or whatever. New York, too. It's like, I'm an actress. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, an actress in New York. But in my I interview. More fries. more fries, please. In my interview at Jane... They were like, so why do you want to become a waitress? Because you don't have any serving experience on your resume. And I said, it's the fastest way to make money with keeping my clothes on. And I was like, funny joke. (laughs) True. And the man went, okay, we'll call you. And I was like, oh, I think that's my, I think that's a rejection. (laughs) And then I worked at Elmo in uh, Chelsea. I love Elmo. They have great... Fried chicken. Fuck Elmo. I worked there for a day. Oh. I had an amazing interview with this amazing guy. And then uh, show up for work. I was wearing a silver pleather skirt. Yes, God. A black turtleneck with silver jewelry. My hair was very straight. And I looked very, I looked cute as fuck. And I was seating people and serving them or whatever. And then the manager comes over and he's like, hey, Nicole, uh, we just have to like talk to you in the back. And I was like, okay. And he was like, I, this isn't going to work out for us. And I was like, what do you mean? Cause it was a different manager. And he's like, how do I say this? You're too jolly. What? And I was like, jolly. Okay. What does that mean? Gather my belongings. I'm leaving. And I went, he called me fat. The only person you called jolly is Santa. And he's a fat white man who fits in chimneys. I'm too jolly to seat people at a restaurant called Elmo. Are you? There is, I don't even have to squeeze anywhere. Elmo's shaped like a U. I can glide in between shit. What do you mean I'm too jolly? I never once sat someone and said, ho, 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 hope you enjoy your food. Like, what do you? I was livid. So fuck Elmo. I'll never eat there again. Let me tell you. You're gay. I'm not a man. We are very dear friends. You're like family to me. But if we were in an alternate dimension, would you date me? Oh, yeah. <gasps> you would? Well, yeah. Here's And here's why. Because you're fun. Uh-huh. You keep things moving. You keep things going. <sighs> you can be serious. You're very smart. You're uh-huh. very business savvy. Uh-huh. Uh, you're very pretty, and oh. I know I wouldn't be gay, but I would still help you do your wigs, oh. help you do your makeup, yes. redesign houses. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think that the one thing about you two that you don't let a lot of people see is that you do, like on TV, you're very funny, you're very bubbly, you have all this great energy, but there's another side to you that I enjoy, which is you are very serious, you are very politically aware, you are very smart, and you are, when I mean, to talk about someone who knows how to do the business and handle yourself in a career, you absolutely know what you're doing. And it is very inspiring, and I think that there's a lot of... Um, people who may, may not see that watching Girl Code or your show now, but it's, it's there and it exists, and Nicole's wonderful. Mateo, you're the only person with who has said that they would date me without any other thing. Like, what do you mean? So she was like, I would date you, but you're not going to like what I'm going to say next. She was like, I would want to fix you. And then everyone else has been like, you're emotionally damaged. <laughs> Well, we all are. Yeah, I got two dead parents, and I don't know where love c- comes from. We're coming to the end of our podcast. Oh, that's it. Did we learn it? Was I a terrible guest? No, this was great. Uh, we had a real fun conversation that truly just like went in and out, and it was beautiful. And um, do you have anything to plug? When does this come out? I don't know. Just follow <laughs> me on Instagram. Uh huh. Mateo Lane, M A T T E O L A N E. Uh, he's got fabulous butt pictures, and it's wonderful, and I love it. Okay, so I forgot to do this on the other one, but if you like what you hear, you can rate me five stars on on iTunes. <laughs> I almost said on Instagram. 
And I was like, put podcasts aren't on Instagram. So if you like what you're hearing and you're on iTunes, you can rate me five stars. I would love it so much. And subscribe so you can like hear new episodes and shit like that. And if you write a review where you like hit on me, I will read it during a podcast. Here's an example. You are one sexy mama. That's all I got to say. Hit me up if you ever need a boy toy. And then I got a DM on Instagram the other day that said, when will you let me please you? And then I got another one that said, let me all up in your guts. Are they say- Oh, see, I heard that for the first time the other day. I never heard that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me all up in your guts means he wants to like break through my cervix and fucking pound my intestines. Then he better send a photo to prove he's going to do They're that. They're all disgusting. They're all nasty. Yeah. So please, yeah, say anything nasty. The more creative, the happier I am. Uh, Mateo, thank you so much for doing this. I love you dearly. I love you. If you have a chance to see Mateo live, do it. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Twitter so you can see him live. Because truly, it's a delight. You can watch him on Stephen Colbert. That clip is up on YouTube. It's very, very funny. I got to watch him work it out for like a while. Like a while. And it got to such a beautiful place and it's so funny. Oh, so, Mateo, thank you. thank you so much for doing this. I love you. Bye-bye. I love you. Goodbye. That was a HeadGum Podcast.